All right, folks, how's it going? Welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today we have in this 2007 Lexus GX470, and she's in really good shape. I just helped a customer pick it out. I did an inspection on it, but upon my inspection, I found that the ex exhaust manifold gasket was leaking. Seems to be pretty common on these on this generation Lexus and Toyota on the V8s. Uh, so I put this video together to try to help some of you guys out there. For those of you that don't know what an exhaust manifold gasket is or looks like, it's just this. It's the gasket between the exhaust manifold and the engine block. I'm sure you'll notice when picking them out that generally you can only get them in pairs. I think that's incurred to encourage people to change them out in pairs because if one side's going out, the other side will probably go out fairly soon. I just do one side at a time for customers to try to keep pricing down. You know, with inflation and the economy and everything, not everybody can swing doing both so i just quote out one side at a time but if you're a do-it-yourselfer and your labor is essentially free it might not be a bad idea to change out both sides the procedure will be pretty similar from the left and right hand side remember left hand side for our north american drivers is the driver side you always do your sides by this as if you're sitting in the vehicle left hand side right hand side and that way through different countries and for different you know, driver sides, it's a way to keep things uniform for ordering parts and all of that. Sometimes on the exhaust manifolds, if they're nice enough, they'll label it for you. You can see on this one, it has an L for left-hand side, and on the other gasket, it has an R for right-hand side. You know, just make sure whatever one you take off, you're replacing it with the same, same one. So yeah, and I imagine this for the left-hand side will sit out like this. This bevel here will hang over the exhaust act as a heat shield for things above it. A couple things that are really important when in anytime you're doing gaskets or mating surfaces, machine surfaces that, that seat together, you want to make sure that the mating surfaces are extremely clean, free of any grease, dirt, anything like that, so that you get a really good seal. And you're also going to want to make sure to torque your manifold or any mating surface in the manufacturer's recommended fashion if that makes sense so for this you know i don't have the torque specs up right now but i imagine it'll be inward and go in kind of an outward spiral that's kind of a good rule of thumb if you don't have the specs i also like to go in and replace the studs or at least have them on hand it's not uncommon for exhaust manifold studs to break and when that happens it really sucks but i like to just keep them on hand if you're not sure of where to get the information for torquing and you know the specifications for what order you're supposed to torque your gasket for, uh, a great resource out there for everybody is called alldataDIY.com. And generally for about 20 bucks, you can get everything that you need for your car, wiring diagrams, torque specifications, different procedures for a month. Or they have like a year long program with some better pricing. They're not a sponsor of the channel but they're the only real public resource that's out right now for all mix and models. Um, you know, kind of gone are the days of the, just going down to the auto store and getting the little handbook. For older classic cars, that's great and still applicable, but generally for newer cars, it's just digital manuals. And for me, I found that's kind of the easiest site. And it'll also give you another really good resource. A lot of people, general public, don't know about technical service bulletins. Those aren't accessible to the general public unless they're safety related, uh, like airbag recalls and stuff like that. Outside of that, so a technical service bulletin is basically if there's like a weird common problem with the car, the manufacturer has had their engineers or whatever team dive into the root cause of that issue, and then they publish a bulletin for technicians such as myself to look at. So if there is a weird problem going on with the car and you're not sure, you know, always check for bulletins first. And on All Data DIY, again, not a sponsor, they will provide you with bulletins so you can see common weird issues and how to resolve them, or at least test and check and see if that issue is applicable to your vehicle. So another thing to keep in mind, but I have found on these Toyota Lexus, I think I might have said it before, the exhaust manifolds on the V8s seem to be pretty common to go out. You can tell you have an exhaust leak because your exhaust one will sound louder than normal. I have a client that refers to exhaust leaks as a, as a putt-putt. He's European, I don't know, he cracks me up. 
you can especially notice it on acceleration and it'll be louder on one side typically than the other and it'll be like a pop, 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 and you'll hear it with the rpms of the engine it's important to fix exhaust leaks especially pre-catalytic converter if you live somewhere where emissions are important it's important to fix our exhaust leaks pre-catalytic converter one it can throw off your o2 sensors data if fresh air is entering the system before it gets to your upstream and downstream o2 sensor it can cause it to come back with some weird results it might be your check engine light could come on with false reasons it could just be the exhaust leak but it's saying the o2 sensor or you could get catalyst inefficiency code or it could prematurely burn out your catalytic converter if you have fresh oxygen coming into the system it could be getting that catalytic converter hotter than it's supposed to and could prematurely burn it out so any pre-cat exhaust leak you you do want to handle and take care of it if it's post catalytic converter it's generally not a big deal unless the emissions place has to take a tailpipe measurement it could affect that and then they might tell you that you need to get that leak fixed but i haven't seen that really be an issue but if any of you guys have run into that post catalytic converter exhaust leak causing you issues you know let me down no down in the comments so yeah i'll do my best to try to go over the job it's not a very technical job you know i think beginner to intermediate should be able to perform this job um, really as long as you are very clean in your work and you use a good brand for your gasket and you torque everything the way it's supposed to be you should be successful and of course don't forget to torque your tire after you're done we will be going in through the fender well to perform this job there's not really a way to get to it up top it's pretty tight in there um, unfortunately these older styles you know newer cars they've made it so basically the whole fender well is just a piece of plastic you take that thing out you can get to pretty much everything you need to on but on some body styles and stuff like that the frame will be kind of in the way and I think we're gonna see that here all right I'll take you guys along and let me know if you guys have any questions or if I missed anything or if you need more information let's get this job taken care of okay so obviously the first thing you want to do is jack up the vehicle make sure it's securely on a jack stand and that your wheels are shocked i always chalk the wheels as a safety precaution because i'd rather chalk it unnecessarily than to forget to chalk it when i definitely should have you also notice it looks pretty tight in here you can't even really see the exhaust manifold let's pull this plastic cover here let's see what's underneath now it's pretty common for these plastic tabs to break you can get online a kit you do a lot of DIY stuff, uh, you can get a kit that has an assortment of plastic clips um, so that if they do break, you've got replacements on hand. So the first thing that we're going to need to pull off here is this heat shield. And then we'll start pulling our manifold bolts. I should be able to do this job without having to remove the O2 sensor or without having to uh, undo this, there's generally enough play in the exhaust where I should be able to just pull these bolts and get it out of the way so I can clean it and everything like that. But let's start this exhaust cover. All right, folks, so I got the heat shield out of the way. There's two 10 millimeters on the top and two on the bottom. The ones on the bottom are gonna be really hard to see. So you'll wanna use a mirror and you can pop it up under and look for things. It's really tight in there, so I'm not showing the actual process, but just trying to help walk you through it. I know it's really tight in there and it's really hard to see. The name of the game here is just try to be as patient as possible. Take your time. If you're getting flustered, you know, just step away for a few minutes, go get a snack, go watch an episode of a show or something and then come back to it. I found the most success when I'm having a lot of trouble with something stepping away for five to ten minutes and then coming back to it usually can help a lot so try and just be patient the next thing we're going after are the stud bolts they're probably a 13 or 14 feels like a 14 let's try a 13 just to make sure yeah these are 14 i think toyota likes 12 and 14s instead of 13 and 15s but for doing if you do a lot of exhaust work these uh semi-deep sockets they're perfect and another thing you can get is they have semi-deep swivel sockets that are really handy for exhaust work so i'm going to try to take all these off i think there should be eight 
total. Hopefully nothing breaks. If it if some if one of the studs does break, I am gonna have to remove you know the whole manifold and everything. It'll be a pain in the butt. Hopefully nothing breaks and uh, we'll be successful. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to add is I was able to break them all free with a quarter inch ratchet, two ex two inch extension, and this 10 mil. That seemed to do the trick. If you have some rust buildup on your bolts and they keep getting stuck in your socket like this, you can just take the socket with the bolt in it and just slam it on the ground. Uh, that's a trick I learned at the dealership for getting bolts out of, of sockets pretty quickly. So yeah, wish me luck on this uh, exhaust manifold. All right, folks, so I'm on the other side of it. I've got all eight now out. What can I say? I learned a lot through this process. I've done this job on a 4Runner before and it wasn't nearly this difficult. I was able to use just standard tools. But on this Lexus, it's just so tight in there and it's so hard to see. And another thing I've learned about you know, Toyota Lexus, Honda Acura is they're such well-built cars that they really are not taken apart very often. When you do go in to do a job uh, kind of deeper in, you can really run into some seized up stuff because it's just not touched very often, if that makes sense. But out in front of you, I have all the tools that I used and I'll kind of go over the method and the results. What I found that basically if you're looking, let's get our gasket so we can kind of map things out. Okay, so what you're gonna notice is these three are gonna be relatively easy to get to. Um, and they came out with little trouble using an impact, an extension, a wobble, my long 14. I really wanted to get semi-deep 14 millimeter half inch drive but all of them are either sold out or really expensive so i bought an impact deep socket set that's kind of lower end that'll be a sacrificial one that i can cut down and make semi-deep because with these studs in the way you can't use just a normal you know short socket or whatever so where i ran into problems was this second one in and that one ended up looking like this so what happened was because of the angle and everything, this one I tried to take out from up top using a flex head breaker bar. You're gonna need a flex head breaker bar for this job and I'll go over the process more as we go into the story. But with this one, it's stripped out and I didn't have any extractor sets. So my idea was to try to cut it and then pry this nut off and then use my stud extractor to pull out the stud because we have replacement studs anyways and there's really just no room in there. I mean, just making this cut without cutting anything else was hard enough. I bit the bullet and I invested in a really good extractor set. You don't have to get this, this brand or anything, not a sponsor, but uh, this is a 28 piece extractor set I got off Amazon, not a sponsor, and it really did the job. I got a really big kit like this because I do this every day, but if you're doing this job and you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're trying to keep uh, your budget low, this is this is the only one that I ended up using. Worked like a charm the entire time on one that was already stripped and then another one that I stripped out. I haven't stripped out a nut in like five years, but sure enough, you are going to need an impact gun for this job. You can get an electric one from Harbor Freight for like 80 bucks. It doesn't have to be snap on or super fancy or anything like that but you will need an impact gun and i'll go into that into more detail so this is this is the one that you're probably going to start to run into trouble on that you're going to want to invest in a good extractor so then the bottom four let's see on this one here that goes here you can get to this one from the bottom i tried to get it from through the tire well and that's how i stripped it out then i used the extractor with I needed about, what is that, probably three feet worth of half inch extension to get up in there. And because it's a 3 8 drive, on my end here, I have a, my swivel and then a half inch to 3 8 adapter um, that you're going to need for that too. And this swivel and adapter, you don't have to get something super fancy either. I think these, this is like a no, these are both like no name no name brand I just bought off of Amazon one night when I needed it and this one's kind of coming apart so I'll probably upgrade it here soon so yeah I was able to get to the bottom so the these three are gonna be the hardest of all but look at 
I was able to do it without stripping any of them. And what the idea was, I basically stopped using a socket altogether and literally just use an extra extractor for, for the rest of them. So if you are reusing your stud and nut, which I wouldn't recommend, but if you're really, really tight budget, look at how well the nut came out. It's still usable. Whereas the ones where I tried to use a socket first and then the extractor, I mean, that thing's just toast. There's no way you can reuse that. Okay, the method that I used for getting these three out. I used this setup with my impact. I went in through the fender well and I used my impact driver to hammer on the extractor. It wasn't spinning at all. I wasn't getting enough juice to spin it, but I was getting the hammering action to hammer this on. Then I went up top, used a flex head ratchet to wrap around that exhaust and get it like that and I was able to break it free. Then once I broke the nut free or the stud, I went back into the fender well back with this and now that it was broken free, I was able to rotate it out of there um, and didn't break any studs into the engine. If, if you don't really have a lot of experience, I, I hope this is really helpful. I know this is like, it's hard to see, it's hard to reach. You have like no room for leverage or anything but I was able to get it out with just the stuff that you see here. So I would recommend getting a whole new, you know, like I did for this job before I even started, uh, got all new studs and nuts to put fresh ones in. But yeah, that was the process. Now we're not out of the woods yet. I just checked for the play in that, that manifold. And yeah, there's enough room probably to swap out the gasket, but not really to inspect or clean anything. So I'm still on the fence about pulling the actual manifold assembly. I'm gonna see how difficult that looks. And I have, and if I end up just having to just throw the gasket in, um, I'll do that, but it's definitely not preferred. But I'll take out the old gasket and show it to you guys and all that stuff. All right, folks, I wanted to go over what I ended up doing, and that was pulling the entire manifold. I just didn't feel right swapping out just the gasket. After looking at these ports, you know, they look, they look pretty dirty, um, the mating surface, you know, and so I wanted to clean that side and this side up really well. Um, you can see there's our old gasket compared to our new gasket. So yeah, and another thing I wanted to show you that I didn't have a chance to before, when you're taking this heat shield off, the bottom set of 10 millimeters is just slightly inward of the top set if you're having a hard time, time finding them. You'll probably get snagged up on this is part of your EGR system, and so there's a metal tube that's hooked up here, so two 10 millimeters there. And then as far as getting this O2 sensor clip out, you know, something that I was taught at the dealership, so this is our mail side that's facing us, and the retention clip is here at the end. Something you could do is just slide this screwdriver underneath, put a little sideways tension on it, and that'll release the the clip for you and you can pull it out uh, but I did also pull this side of the exhaust um, so there's the two bolts that mount underneath the catalytic converter there and then there was this exhaust hanger which you didn't know um, you can use a set of exhaust hanger pliers like that to pop it loose and then uh, those two bolts there they were 12 millimeter now what's interesting about the way that they assemble exhausts is that they use studs and all this stuff and they know it's going to rust in there I don't know why they don't do a through bolt system but like when I put this back together uh, I'm going to cut off these nuts and I'm gonna just do a through bolt and a nut that's not welded I don't know why they do it like that whatever but uh, it'll also get a fresh gasket um, and then you know for this side too you know I had a stud break and then this one stripped out so I'll cut that drill these out and again get an appropriate um, size bolt to put in there seal it all back up um but yeah i hope that helps you guys thanks for coming on another adventure in the garage and let me know if you got any questions